this way. Um, I came from a very Christian family. My, um, my parents were not pastors, but they loved the Lord with all their heart. Uh, but then my mom came from, uh, my grandfather was the first president of what we know in the North Middle Belt, Kokin, Church of Christ in Nations. But that didn't mean anything to me. I didn't even have a very personal relationship with him. Uh, but, but then my parents loved the Lord. They still do. And, uh, you know, raised us in the way of the Lord. I would say that I started having encounters. I, I can't remember exactly when, but uh, maybe because of my background, I didn't know they were spiritual encounters. I started having prophetic dreams, visions. I would know things about people even before I saw them. But I didn't think it was... I didn't have anybody who would tell me it was such a big deal. I thought that was how everybody lived. Um, but, but then I was, I was concerned about myself, why my life was very strange. I didn't, of course, I played around, but the things that kids would want, television, sit in the parlor, run around, it was, it was completely not my concern at all. In fact, I remember my dad one day talking to me and uh, just jokingly, and he said something, you know, paraphrasing, something is wrong with you. You don't come to the parlor, you don't sit down, you are not happy, people are watching movies, you are not being part of it. I would just isolate myself and sit somewhere. Why, why I would go there, I still cannot explain. You see, just sit alone and be very happy. I was absolutely happy with myself. In fact, if you came to knock the door or something, it would be an interruption. And, and I may not necessarily be doing anything, but just enjoy my company there. But now I know that it was the beckoning of the spirit because of the kind of call. But, but the, real, the real preparation, I would say, happened when I had the privilege uh, of, of being under the leadership of a, a great man um, called Reverend Jidanke um, in the seminary. That man was, it was an Anglican seminary but then he was he had lived in the u.s for many years and so he inculcated the culture the training and then he was someone who loved the lord and um sincerely i think it was the best decision uh that i made to be with that man i was with him for just a year you know he was then my principal it was a wonderful experience he began to make sense out of spiritual experiences because we were very few I'm not sure we're more than 50 or 60. And then he began to inculcate values. And I noticed that my encounters began to multiply. That was when I started learning that um, the things of the spirit are really atmosphere dependent. You know? Um, so I had several encounters, um, loved the Lord. Then we used to go out. He forced us to go. Well, uh, I'm grateful to him, but would go out for evangelism. Did you know we were so serious that the masquerades didn't flog us? You know how masquerades come out and oppress people? And here we are, priests with our cassock, they would just go and they knew that we're seminarians and we're serious with God. He taught us that the four spiritual laws. We had a course then called um, Spiritual Growth, and we used a book called Honesty, Morality, and Conscience. He taught us character. You didn't throw sweet rap on the ground. No, you could go home for that, literally. And so you would have to put it in your pocket and look for a bean. You would greet people by bowing down, not saying hi, hello. No, 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 there was no such thing. You would bow down properly and greet people. So you can imagine that kind of training. You didn't just jump at food because it was in front of you. You would be disciplined. You would wait until, you know. And then he developed a quiet time system. That, that for me is the most striking of this he developed a quiet time system that we all followed. He taught us how to do devotion. He taught us the sequence, how to learn scripture, spiritual growth. And at the end of the year, if you could recite, we had verses that we recite. You know, most people see me recite these things and they think it's just the anointing. It's been many, many decades of that inculcating that that value every month we had a scripture you had to learn it whether you liked it or not you would have to learn the scripture so after many years you find out that you just you know and if you could recite them all through uh, uh, for a year then they would give you a scholarship you know 
just a decrease in your fees and, and so on and so forth. So I had that kind of background. Um, but then I would say the first, I, I was quite an exceptional person supernaturally. It wasn't something I found out that I stood out. Um, there was something about my life that made people um, always interested. If it was leadership, if it was um, whatever it is, you know, it seemed like I was always involved in whatever was happening within. Uh, but then I knew that it was for a reason. Um, I think it was December 2002. That would be my first real encounter. Until then, I had started writing. I started ministry aside from being part of a number of groups. I, I'm just trying to save the details. Um, I, I played keyboard for, for um, a ministry. They were using a hotel. They were, they were part of the people who would later preach for Bas and Joy in the prison. And so I used to play the keyboard for them. I would carry my keyboard, play free of charge, go back home. Um, so all of those times. But I, I started having the inspiration to write letters, literally. I would write letters and tell people seven signs of the coming of Christ. I would go to a computer center, print as many, just distribute and all of that. And then 2nd December 2002, I had, I was sleeping and then someone tapped me. It was real, it was not a vision. Tapped me and then I woke up. And I knew that was the presence of Jesus. I started weeping profusely. Until then, I had been in probably what would you would call ministry. But that encounter, it changed my life. And I started noticing that um, I, I was sensing the anointing. I was walking in power. Um, in the seminary, we did, we, did, we did very well. There was a man uh, who... Who got us filled with the Holy Spirit? You know, the Anglican seminary wasn't a place that they allowed, you know, praying in tongues and all of that. But they brought that man through a then matron who is late now. She's passed on to glory. And the man came and prayed for us. I remember the only example he gave was that when you pray in understanding, you run on one foot. When you pray in tongues, you run. And that was it. And we sang a song. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. That was the song, give him the glory that he deserves. Are you ready? We're jumping happy. We didn't know what to expect. And that was it. And the power of God came upon us. Oh, boy. It was such an outpouring of the spirit. It was a revival. Uh, we started a prayer meeting called Operation Catacruz, <laughs> where we would pray, and it, sometimes it would turn into a vigil. Um, I started operating in word of knowledge, miracles. I would pray for people and watch dramatic miracles. But then, because I didn't have people to make it look like a big deal, and I also didn't have people who would downplay it, you know, I, it, I didn't see the relevance. But uh, th that experience continued to build. But my encounter, first encounter with the Lord Jesus, December 2002, it just changed my life completely. I started sensing the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Um, I got to a point in my life where I would, you know, just be around and begin to see a mist literally come into the room. And I would know that this, this is like the Shekinah of God's presence. Um, I had many experiences. Sometimes my Bible, now it's difficult to say some of these things because I don't want people to build their faith on experiences. Mm -hmm. But my Bible would literally open, open by itself to maybe a chapter or somewhere that the Lord would want me to read. And I would just study. I started having all of these experiences. Um, so that, that would be my, uh, my, my, I think, a summary of the journey. It's been, it's been a journey of many encounters supported by you know this one man especially different people played roles but that that one man really changed my life just for a year i had the honor and the privilege of meeting with him after many years three or so years ago and then this year i decided to make sure that i would get a gift to him to say thank you after many decades this is what i've become um, 
So, so most of my trainings came directly from the Holy Spirit, directly, the dealings. Of course, I read books and I did all of that, but it came, you know, my background, unlike ministry in the East or the, the, the concept of mentorship, fatherhood, like you say, I have a pastor. It wasn't so because the context of church, you would have a pastor for two years, three years, and then they relocated the man. So you didn't have... Um, that, that level of proximity to have personalized mentorship. You'd have to outsource. If you were fortunate to have a father who was a pastor or relatives who loved God, and then I was the first son, you know, being the first son, I didn't have someone ahead of me. So it was purely the dealing of the Spirit directly with me. I, I think I can stop here. Wow. So that, 